So basically we produce all of our liners in, in one of two root pruning methods, either the fabric bag, the constriction prunes, or air prunes. Um, obviously if the root gets out of the bag, it air prunes, otherwise the root tip will get tangled in the fiber, constrict itself, and then divide up inside of the plant. So our whole goal is to produce a, a hardy, strong plant uh, in either one year cycle or two year cycle to build in a, a transplantable, very thick fibrous root system. And the reason why we want transplantability is so important to us so that our trees start to grow immediately when they're introduced to the field. So we can sell a two inch red oak that's only three years in the field versus a two inch red oak that's five years in the field. The faster it goes in and out of the field without having to jack the plant with too much nitrogen, the more readily it'll be able to transplant. All of our internal liner production, um, we use four to five month osmocote versus uh, nine to 10 month osmocote in, in virtually everything we plant in the fall. So that allows us to be more efficient, that allows us to put more into production. Um, most things have a fiberglass tree stake on them here in liner production uh, if they're a single stem. When we take them to the field, we immediately will work the top and prune the top of this tree and then put it to a fiberglass tree stake also. So all of our shade trees and most all of our single stem ornamentals are growing on a fiberglass tree stake here in liner production and also in the field. And the main reason, or there's two reasons why that's important. One is, well, they both have to do with the stake moving with the tree. This fiberglass tree stake will bend and move. That creates much less rubbing on the tree. Even a tree this size with a, with a rigid stake on it it creates a little rub. As the tree grows and matures, that rub becomes a weak spot where the tree heals uh, and the tree can break or insects, uh, diseases, uh, it creates an entry point. Um, so the fiberglass tree stake that we go to in the field, uh, like on this elm, would be an 11 16 by 11. It's a big stake, but will still bend. And that flexing and bending will allow us to produce much more caliper on the trunk of the tree like this. This tree pretty much will stand on its own versus fall over on the ground, which is what you would get with the bamboo tree stick. I like the, fi the fabric bag uh, a little bit better than this pot. It stands up better for us. Um, and it's also disposable to where you don't have any opportunity to, to, to transfer disease. These bags basically rip right apart. <clears throat> when we go to the field with this tree, uh, we have all these beautiful root tips that are gonna come immediately in contact with our soil and develop uh, or start rooting. Um, when we take the trees to the field, we will shake some of the soil off in an effort to get just about that much in an effort to really improve the soil contact we get. On oaks, we'll shake off even a little bit more than that, but on an elm, it would just be uh, about that much. Um, everything we use in our container media is, is uh, organic with the exception of the Osmocote. We use uh, humates, uh, pine bark, compost, uh, and worm castings. What we're trying to do is build uh, an environment in the pot where we have as much bioactivity as possible. Bacteria, fungus, uh, microorganisms of all kinds. We've even found earthworms in our container media, which is absolutely incredible. Generally, it's a very sterile environment. We inoculate all of our trees at planting with mycorrhizas, IBA, and uh, fulvic acid also to really get the tree to respond quickly and start developing this fibrous root system. So there's absolutely no circling within this within this container. Nothing but a massive amount of fibrous root. 
which is a really big deal on an elm because elms are propagated in three ways. They're propagated by tissue culture, uh, rooted cutting, or by budding. If they're budded, they're budded on top of Siberian elm, which is a horrible, horrible tree. The, ro the root system will outgrow the top of the tree. Tissue culture, a lot of times the elms will be mutated rather than, than true to name. So we generally always, or we always start on elm trees with a rooted cutting. But the problem with elms from rooted cutting is sometimes the root system won't develop very well in the field. You'll wind up with an unbalanced root system. Root system all on one side of the tree or uh, a root system with a J root, which is a root that comes down and takes a sharp angle. So all the J roots, when they're planted, are rejected. We only plant good, clean root systems, and then we develop all this fiber underneath, underneath the tree with a balanced uh, system. An elm, actually, like this is a Triumph Elm, this will actually only be two years in the field for us to a two inch tree. On the root maker pot, this is the English oak. This is an air root printing pot. The roots will hit the ribs inside of the pot and go over to a hole on the, on the back side. You can see the, the light. There's little holes at each one of the edges of these ribs to where the root tip goes to the edge, hits the ribs, and then makes its way to an air point where it hit the root tip hits the air the air will kill the root tip and it forces the root system to divide within the container so we wind up with the same kind of non spiraled root system with an incredible amount of fibrous root. So basically this Colmner English oak within three years will be a two or two and a half inch tree. Excellent transplantability. Um, great leaf count on the nursery. Excellent chance of transplant success.